seconds until airtime. We're just getting started. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, here's Joey Mack. Thank you, and it's the day after signing day. Uh, it's always a good optimism kind of day after signing day. Everybody feels like... Their football program is is going to be the best they've ever been. Even if you feel that way, it's not always that way. Well, in Oregon, it might actually be that way because the Ducks for the third straight year signed the best recruiting class in program history. And all I will say is exactly what Mario Cristobal said yesterday, that, and they're maybe not done. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, today, Justin Herbert has taken home yet another NFL Rookie of the Year award. And this is the most important piece of news today regarding Justin Herbert, besides being honored as the Pepsi Zero Sugar NFL Rookie of the Year. He told Pat McAfee the flow is coming back. Breaking news! Justin Herbert's flow is coming back, which brings me to... Should the flow for Joey Mack come back, Scott Phillips? Scott's like, God, no. That's no. an interesting question because uh, we, got, we got this little picture here. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, and, see? You know, the flow it's, a great, good. it's a great picture of the cardboard cutout. Right? That is currently at Matthew Knight Arena. My thanks to Matt Ulmer for finding it uh, from his view of, of the floor level. And also, Scott is there. Where am I? Oh, there am I. There I am. Yeah. That's me, right behind uh, the mustache. Guy. With a stormtrooper. Yeah. And a hat. How did we get the hat to stay on the stormtrooper helmet? You ballasted it pretty well. Did I? That was all me. Th it was back in the day. Back in these days. Yeah. Look at that. God, that's <laughs> scary. That is. That's a scary picture. I look like Doc Brown. Yeah. I, guess I actually look like Doc Brown in that picture. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, there it is. I think this is a better look. <laughs> okay. I think this is a better look. All right, we open the show with a little bit of fun. We're all very excited uh, because Justin Herbert has taken home another one of the NFL Rookie of the Year awards. We were just discussing in the office here that there's there's a lot of them. Also, men's basketball is back. The Ducks will return to the court against Washington State tonight at 8 o'clock, 7.30 pregame show on the Oregon Sports Network. 8 o'clock, well, it's actually an 8.10 official tip-off on Fox Sports 1. Yeah, I know. I said the same thing that you all are thinking right now. I think there's a few big keys against Washington State. One, it's going to be the conditioning of this Oregon team. They've only practiced twice leading into this game since their pause. They will be without Eric Williams. They will have LJ Figueroa and Chris Duarte. That's the expectation heading into this game. Isaac Bonton is a player to watch for Washington State. Very, very talented point guard. Runs a really smooth offense. And Washington State has committed to playing defense. Well, if Oregon hasn't been able to find that rhythm that we've been talking about, usually a good defensive team, not a good formula if you can't find your rhythm on offense against a good defensive team. Rebounding as well. The Ducks were negative 19 on the glass against Oregon State. Can't have that against Washington State. And you got to push through if things aren't going well. I did have a chance to talk with Coach Altman for our pregame interview this morning that you'll hear coming up as part of our pregame show on the radio this evening at 730 but to give a little bit of it away, I asked, do you sub more? D do you plan on substituting more because of the conditioning concerns and trying to make sure that everything gets into a rhythm as best it can? And Coach said, yeah, we will. He said they're going to substitute more around TV timeouts, get guys more rest, though he did acknowledge that the Ducks tried to do that against Oregon State, and it didn't go well. 
That was without Chris Duarte and L.J. Figueroa, though. So we'll see. But Oregon back in action tonight against Washington State. We're going to hear from Dane Altman, uh, the greatest hits from his press conference, availability of players, talking about everything that you want to know about Oregon men's basketball with Dane Altman in just a moment. Take your Facebook comments and questions, YouTube comments and questions, or your Twitter comments and questions if you're watching live with us across one of the vastly multiple, and they seem to always be increasing exponentially, social media channels. This is going to be a really fun interview, too, that you're going to hear in just a little while on the show. Sarah Goodrum. Oregon softball alum. She and I actually did not graduate the same year, but are the same age. She's a groundbreaker, truly. The first female to be a minor league hitting coordinator in a major league baseball organization. Working for the Milwaukee Brewers. Awesome conversation. You won't want to miss it. Uh, Sarah Goodrum with a lot of great things to say, reminiscing about her time at Oregon and what has led her to this groundbreaking moment as spring training is rapidly approaching, and they're all pretty excited about that. Dave asking a very pertinent question. Is Will Richardson going to play tonight? I would say 90% no. I asked Dane Altman about that, and he has been cleared. He has been running since it was a hand-thumb injury. But it's going to be up to Will Richardson, is what Dane Altman said on our pregame chat this morning. It's going to be up to him if he feels like he's ready to go and he's comfortable and he's good to go. He's been working with Clay Jamison, the Duck Athletic trainer, I would not expect Will Richardson to go tonight, but as Coach Altman said, it's going to be up to Will. Looks like the Ducks, though, are getting closer and closer to having the guy who will be their starting point guard back. He's played in more games than anybody else on the Oregon roster, at least more games in an Oregon uniform than anybody else on the Oregon roster. So having him back, certainly going to help. Dane Altman talking about that, let you listen to exactly what he said about all the details of those players and the availability and what the Ducks were able to do during their second COVID pause. Be the first time the Ducks have been back on the floor in about a month. Dane Altman talking with the media, previewing tonight's 8 o'clock tip-off against the Cougars. Dana, before we get into um, just everybody's status for this weekend, can you speak to just the challenge that this has been mentally for, for everybody, for yourself, for your staff, for the players, where I'm not sure, I'm sure there's somebody else out there who's had to start and stop multiple times, but to do it and do it, right on top of each other and have a game in between that was a loss because we were stretched so thin. This has had to have been a very mentally taxing last month for you guys. You know, I feel really bad for the players, James. Um, you know, the coaching staff, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing, you know, we have our families right here. We get to go home. Uh, those guys are <laughs> pretty much in their own bubble there. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long four weeks. I'll, I'll have to be honest, you know, and I've talked to the guys about it. You know, I, we've got to address it. We just can't pretend like it doesn't exist. Uh, in the last month, we've played one game and, and uh, we'll have our fifth practice today. And, you know, the guys want to want to be players, you know, and we haven't been able to get in the gym. And, and so it's been a, a difficult time. But, you know, I told our guys, you know, we we're judged how we overcome adversity. And this is, is not been an ideal situation for our basketball team. And we're just going to have to fight our tails off to try to overcome it. But at the same time, I've tried to stay upbeat and, and uh, you know, clap my hands a lot, just trying to let them know that it, it's, it's not going to be like we planned and it's not going to be smooth tomorrow night. Uh, I told the guys, if you, think we're going to come out and just play a perfect game and everything's going to roll and be smooth. You know, we're going to be sorely disappointed. We, we've got to figure out a way to play each four minute segment. Uh, it's going to be an ugly game. You know, we're just going to have to fight through it. And uh, so that being said, you know, our, our guys, uh, we practiced hard yesterday. We didn't practice maybe well, but we practice hard. And uh, tonight, today we'll lighten it up a little bit. And uh, we just got to be ready to go uh, at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. Can you, Dana, give us an idea of who will be available for you to, to play tomorrow night? Um, I, I think uh, everybody but Eric that, that's played before. Um, you know, we were able to practice yesterday. Uh, Eric uh, is still not rejoined the team. But uh, uh, the other guys were there. And, and so I think all the guys who have played for us uh, will be there. Will, uh, you know, as upon a positive note, was shooting around a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, I don't know. We're, 
Clay is, is talking with his doctors and his therapist and trying to figure out a return. Um, but everything, you know, that's been nine weeks, you know, going on 10, I think here. So, uh, it, it's been a, a, a long process for him. Um, but I, I think he's moving, you know, towards playing here sometime in the future. Dana, when you guys are on pause, is there anything the guys can do? Can they go outside and go to the park and shoot around if it's nice? Can they just go shoot free throws, or are they basically locked in their apartments during that whole time? Well, the first time that we were on pause, it was a complete lockdown. Um, we, we didn't do anything for nine or ten days. Uh, coaches couldn't come into the office. Um, we were on complete lockdown the first time this time uh the coaches were not contact traced so we could come into the offices and the few players who have gone through the virus could come into the gym and everybody else was locked out so uh, we did have a few players in that were able to come in and shoot and and do some running uh but everybody else was was locked out uh, now, as far as going in the park or doing something like that, uh, they can do that on their own if they want to go run, um, you know, uh, on their own, they could do that, uh, but they could not come in the facility. And, and uh, so that was, that was pretty tough on them, you know, just not being able to come into the gym, you know, for eight, nine, 10 days. Um, it does set you back a little bit. And Dan, I know on the women's uh, basketball side, they've had discussions about the week between the Pac-12 tournament and the NCAA tournament as a spot to, to reschedule some of the postponed games. Has there been a similar discussion on, on the men's side of, of a period of time in which to get those games back on the schedule, or are they going to try and make you play you know, 11, 12 games in one month before we get to uh, Las Vegas? You know, we, we're in conversations with, you know, the Pac-12 all the time. You know, trying to figure out, you know, it's not only our schedule, but our opponents, you know, when they can work in games. And so, you know, it's not an easy question. As of right now, I don't think anything's etched in stone on how we're going to try to make up some of those five games. I I don't think there's any way we can make all five of them up. Um, I think us and Arizona State are the two schools that are, you know, a little bit of a jam for as far as making games up. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll do whatever the league tells us to do, but, uh, right now we haven't received word, uh, on when those games will be made up. Yeah. Coach, is there a specific time when you're going to get the vaccine? Is that going to alleviate a lot of these problems possibly or Jerry, uh, you know, I have not, <clears throat> not heard anything, um, uh, uh, about the vaccine, um, we haven't been told that we will receive it um, or won't receive it. You know, we just haven't heard anything. Um, so uh, I'm sure, you know, Clay will let me know. He told me he'd let me know if he ever receives word about a possibility of, of vaccinating some of the players or the coaches. Um, you know, I, I ought to be on the pecking order here pretty quick at 62. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, might be around the corner for me, but uh you know, I don't know. Um, you know, it's it's been a crazy year, Jerry, and and uh, you know, I just wait for the phone to ring from Clay or, or Dr. Davidson just to get word on on what we can and can't do. Um, and so, uh, but we have not discussed vaccines. They haven't told me whether we're in the line to to get them or not. Coach, obviously you're playing your, your second game in only a, a 26 day span. Um, in those four practices that you guys have played, what have, what's the energy level been like, like in the locker room? And what can you say about the resilience from your team? Well, the, you know, the guys are, are happy to be together. Uh, you know, the problem is we go out and, you know, things are so uh, rough, you know, the, the movements, the timing, guys get discouraged right away. And, and I keep telling them, fellas, you know, I know you want it to go perfectly. You've been sitting out for a long time, but you know, there's a reason we practice in a, in a typical year every day, you know, to keep the timing, to keep the, uh, 
the structure going, the rotations on defense, the blockouts, all those things. When, when you don't practice, you lose that timing. And so right now they're getting discouraged really quick. And, you know, I almost a sense of panic. And I just, fellas, it's it, not going to be that way. You know, we just, you don't take this many days off and everything just come back and click. It's going to take some time, but we got to stay with it. We got to continue to make the right basketball plays. We got to make our rotations defensively. We got to do the hard things, you know, and, and again, that's probably, you know, as I, I watch teams come back, whether it's Michigan State or, or Texas or uh, Xavier, any of the teams that are out, you know, that first couple games, you can just tell their players are dragging and they're trying to get a sense of timing there because they just, you know, they're disappointed that it's not clicking like it should be in late January or early February. And uh, so our biggest challenge is to keep them, keep them going. You know, when things don't go right, like they did against Oregon state, our guys went into a little bit of a panic, a little bit of a, you know, Oh, what's going wrong here? You know, nothing's working. And uh, you know, uh, when you don't practice, Again, uh, our last game for Chris and LJ was January 9th. So they haven't played that game in 26 days. Uh, they haven't played a game in 26 days. And they, they didn't even get to practice the, the three days for um, Oregon State. So they're basically in two practices to get ready to play a game. So, again, very unusual circumstances. But they have to prepare themselves mentally to know that it's not going to go perfect. We just got to keep plugging away, trying to make the right plays. And eventually, eventually we'll get back. You know, I don't know how quickly we will, but we will get back if, if we just stay with it. And the guys just keep pounding away. And uh, hopefully it's quicker than later. But uh, it's not going to be, again, a smooth, uh, you know, rhythm game for our offense. And defensively, you know, we got to communicate to try to cut down on some mistakes. And then our conditioning, you know, showed in the last game against Oregon State when our numbers weren't really good, just our lack of conditioning. And I'm, I'm concerned about that tomorrow. You know, we uh, will have some guys that are out there for more minutes than they're conditioned right now just because we haven't been practicing. Coach Altman talking with the media yesterday, getting ready for tonight's tip-off against Washington State. 8 o'clock on Fox Sports 1, 730 pregame show right here on the Oregon Sports Network. Up next, more from Coach Altman, taking a look at the bigger picture, too. What's a Pac-12 tournament maybe going to look like? I don't think anybody knows. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hi, welcome to the Spicy Drive-In. May I take your order? Can I get the spicy chicken sandwich, please? The spicy chicken is an excellent choice, sir. And a drink? Uh, whatever's fine. Oh, may I make a beverage pairing recommendation this evening? Sure. If we are feeling especially bold tonight, sir, I would recommend the Mountain Dew with that. It's bravely unrestrained with a very alive aroma that pairs wonderfully with your spicy chicken. It's followed by a hint of zesty citrus flavor. Uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you already know this, sir, but remember to appreciate the nose first by giving the Mountain Dew a little swirl to relieve really volatize it. Uh, uh, uh vola what? To change the flavor compounds and activate your taste buds to get them fully primed for that chicken sandwich. Ah, it's delicious. <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. The muscular flavor charge characteristics of Mountain Dew make for an absolutely epic mouthfeel when paired with spicy cuisine. It is quite on point, sir. Dude, it's a perfect match. Like they were made for each other. So true, so true. When you want to make good food bolder and bold food better, do the do. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield IMG College. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's important to buckle up your kids. I know. Sometimes car seats can be complicated. I know. And if your child's in the wrong seat and you get into a crash. I know. It could lead to a serious injury. I know. So you're 100% sure you have the right car seat for your child's age and size? I don't know. 
Don't think you know. No, you know. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Make sure you have the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. Tonight's tip-off set for 8, 10 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. Ducks and Cougars as Oregon will get back at it on the hardwood. And calling all cookie lovers, I'm talking to you, Scott Phillips, Crumble Cookies, a rotating menu over 120 flavors. And I, I tell you what, I didn't think that I would ever say that I loved a waffle cookie. Waffles. The waffle cookie with syrup was actually life-changing And the butter from Crumble Cookies. It was really, really good. We're going to continue hearing from Dana Altman. Also up next is Sarah Goodrum, Oregon softball alum who is literally breaking glass ceilings in Major League Baseball. Yeah, it was a really good conversation with Sarah. You're going to want to stick around for it. Dana Altman, part two of his press conference, uh, the greatest hits, if you will, getting ready for tonight's matchup with the Cougs, Oregon men's basketball head coach Dana Altman. Dana, the Wazoo in particular, um, they've really made defense uh, kind of a hallmark of things. Uh, the past couple of seasons under Kyle. What, what have you seen from them defensively specifically uh, that's going to present a bit of a challenge uh, because of defensive efficiency there? I think they're in the top 50 in Ken Palm. Well, they, you know, they change it up, um, play some man, play some zone. Uh, their activity's good. You know, they got two big freshmen that are, are changing some shots around the basket. Uh, but I, again, they're just, they don't give up a lot of easy ones. They don't give up a lot of offensive rebounds. And so, you know, they're solid around the basket. And, you know, just a, a team that, you know, has is, is worked hard to, to be together and play together defensively. And, and they have done a good job. With all the challenges uh, that you guys have coming back from this, you know, rather bizarre month, have you had to lower your expectations of, of what you want out of the season or you just feel like you got to just start plugging away and get back on track? Well, no, I, I haven't lowered my expectations. Uh, you know, we, we just got to fight through it here. Um, uh, been throwing a curve that, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we has, haven't experienced and uh, uh, our players, you know, really in a tough spot, but no, we, we've got six weeks here to, to try to get it right. And are we going to have some more ups and downs? Absolutely. But uh, we've still got a tremendous amount to play for. We still got a good group. Um, you know, they've done a good job of fighting through injuries with Will and Dante. Uh, they've stayed together, you know, so, you know, my goals haven't changed. Um, and I hope theirs haven't. Um, they're going to have to get their heads up. They're going to have to continue to fight. We have to overcome adversity like we've talked about with them. And, it just is what it is. We can't change it. We just got to fight through it. And so I hope they haven't changed their expectations because, you know, I sure haven't changed mine. Yeah, yeah. Just an update on, on how Frank has kind of been acclimating to the Division One game. Frank's doing a good job. He works really hard. Obviously, all this time away from the practice floor has probably affected him more than anybody, uh, you know, because he needs to get out and play since he didn't join us until – after Christmas. Uh, so, you know, it's probably slowed his progression more than anybody, you know, just because he had, wasn't aware of what we were trying to do offensively, you know, to get the reps, um, you know, it's probably slowed him down, uh, probably being as uh, a big a negative for him just because he needed the practice time. Um, so that being said, you know, yesterday he had a ton of energy he was flying around and uh, uh, hitting people and making the practice as physical as he could. So, uh, you know, I just, like I said, we got six weeks here back on the practice floor. Now he just got to keep fighting and get in better shape and try to give us some minutes. The, the, uh, the rebounding was, it was a problem, but if you shoot free throws as well as Oregon state, if you hit a few more threes, you win the game. Are you saying that, and I don't, you don't like to use excuses, but was the conditioning, is that affecting the shooting? Oh, absolutely. No, no. Um, again, that's just natural. You know, like if your legs aren't there, you know, it, it's harder to shoot the ball. And, 
And that's why, you know, I'm very disappointed in our shot selection at times. You know, um, I think the guys, you know, we got to the free throw line the first half and they didn't go in. And now, you know, what good does it do to drive and get fouled? I, I'm not hitting my free throws. And, and so we just settled for threes and kept talking about it in every time out. And, and uh, we still settled, you know, without our best three-point shooter who's, you know, Chris is shooting 45%. You know, I, the percentages will catch up with him occasionally. But uh, the rest of our guys, you know, the percentages just didn't say that. So shot selection wasn't good. As you mentioned the free throws. Um, you know, Oregon State shot them very well. We didn't shoot them, you know. So, uh, again, you know, that we just didn't get it done, you know. And, and uh, everything, though, Jerry, goes back. You know, you asked about conditioning. Rebounding goes back to conditioning. Running the floor goes back to conditioning. Transition defense, transition offense. That's why it's, it's always a, a point of emphasis with us, you know, because we press and we do things our conditioning's got to be great. And, and it wasn't. And I didn't adjust to it as a coach. Our players didn't adjust to it as players. And, and we got beat. And so hopefully um, tomorrow, you know, we'll, we'll run guys in and out. Uh, we'll try to do things differently to keep everybody fresh. Uh, we'll try not to take 29 threes. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try to make some adjustments and, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have a better result, but again, it'll be a difficult game. We're going to have to play our tails off. Uh, we're gonna have to fight on the boards. Uh, we're going to have to do the things that are just effort things, because I don't think the basketball things will go that smoothly. Um, uh, I'd be shocked if they did. And, and then the guys would be saying, see, we don't have to practice every day, coach. You know, we just practice a couple of days here and we're fine. So, uh, but I know that's not the case. And so I know we're going to have to do the things on the boards, diving on loose balls, running the floor, uh, all the tough things, uh, because, the, you know, just shooting the ball and the timing of the offense, there's just no way that it can be smooth. You know, we're going to have to make the best of it. And just to go back to the ability to make up some of these games um, and realizing the conference is still discussing all these things. But like Andrew mentioned, the, the women have that week of flexibility, though, after their scheduled tournament. You guys are up against Selection Sunday. There's an argument to be made that it would actually make the most logistical sense since the end of the regular season is currently you guys against OSU, everybody against their rival, for all the men and women to all go to Vegas for two weeks and try to make up as many games as possible before some sort of a bridge tournament so that people don't go there for only one game to leave and that everybody can get in as many games as possible. Is that something that are you aware of that possibly being on the table? And if not, just your feeling of that right now, it's, it's going to be hard for you guys to schedule the LA schools. And those are the teams who are ahead of you in the standings, what the legitimacy of all this is for, if you're not even playing the teams who are in front of you, you don't have a chance to do so due to these circumstances right now. Well, James, um, you know, you're way ahead of me as far as trying to figure out, you know, the future. Um, I'm worried about Thursday night. I have not heard that as a possibility uh, of everybody going to Vegas for two weeks. Um, you know, I, uh, I think that the conference is looking at moving us to play Oregon state maybe earlier and freeing up the last week to go to LA. I don't know, James, I, I really don't. Um, uh, Eric Rodell is, is handling all that for us. Um, and, and so, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think we'll get all five games that we've missed in. Um, uh, but I do think, you know, we will try to get three or four of them in. You know, and, and uh, when, James, I don't know, but we are going to have some difficult weeks, I'm sure, coming up with three games. Um, you know, it'd be nice if, if we just get everybody healthy and everybody back in shape and, and ready to go. Uh, but right now, I have not heard that to answer your question about two weeks in Vegas. Um, I have heard that, you know, we still want the conference tournament um, as a conference and, and personally, I still, you know, hope that we play a conference tournament. Um, and I'd like to get as many games in for the fellas as we can. 
um, basically because, you know, they'd rather play games in practice, you know, and, and so how many will get in, James? I don't know, uh, but that's, you know, not a bad idea, but I just don't know how many teams, uh, I know us in Arizona State, you know, I don't know what the full slate is for everybody uh, as far as making up those missed games, but, you know, we've got five now, I know, and, and I think Arizona State, they're on another pause, and I think they've got six, you know, so there's quite a few games for us too, and and maybe a few other teams, you know, to make up. But uh, again, I'm sure the conference office, along with the ADs, uh, will make those determinations. It's a Tetris game. Been saying that since the very beginning, that this entire season putting the schedule together is like Tetris. And I, I think it, I make the joke about it being Tetris, not just because I'm a dork, but also because a puzzle – you, you have the picture in your mind, right? Like, you know where stuff is supposed to go. That's like a normal year's schedule. With Tetris, you don't really know what the pieces are that are coming, and you still have to build the schedule. That's what they're all doing right now. It's crazy. Dane Allman brought to you by the Women Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center. Fight like a duck with cancer care you can count on. Up next, stick around. Sarah Goodrum, former Oregon softball player, literally breaking glass ceilings. We're going to talk with her next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. As my family continued to grow, I realized I'd have to replace my beloved Jeep with something that has, well, more seats. I'm Jason Hines, country financial rep and father of seven. Whether you're upgrading from your sporty ride with no room for a car seat or finally replacing your well-loved beater that still has a cassette player, you'll want the right protection for your new car. Work with a country financial rep like me and get the protection you need at a price you can afford. Learn more at takesimplesteps.com or contact a local country representative. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text. And for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Everybody buckle up. Bum, 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 bum. Buckle up. Let's go. Buckle up. Can we go to the store? Come on, buckle can we up. Get some ice cream? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Everybody, buckle up. A lot goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack here with you in the Country Financial Studio. Our thanks to Shadow Hills Country Club, your family resort just minutes from home. Call for a tour today. My golf game still has not gotten any better. It's not going to. It's it, it's impossible. It, it's never going to happen. I will always have a baseball swing, and that will always be the case. And anybody that thinks that they can fix my swing, be my guest. This has been a lot of fun having interviews like the one you're about to hear with Sarah Goodrum on the show. It's all thanks to our Bring Them Back campaign presented by QSL and Instaprint. Locally owned, family operated, and of course operated by Duck fans. Go Ducks! Thanks to our friends at Instaprint for bringing us the Bring Them Back campaign. Sarah Goodrum. Her Oregon history started in 2012 as a freshman and ended up being one of her favorite seasons. Graduated in 2015, ultimately went on to get a master's degree from Utah after playing for the Ducks softball team. And she's the first female to be a minor league hitting coordinator in a major league baseball organization, working for the Brewers. And earlier today, had a chance to sit down with Sarah Goodrum. 
It's my pleasure to welcome back to a University of Oregon production, Sarah Goodrum, who's kind enough to join us. So we've been talking about it on the show, a groundbreaking new role within the Milwaukee Major League Baseball franchise. All right, so first of all, Sarah, it's great to see you again. We were discussing before we pressed record that the last time you and I spoke would have been at Howe Field, probably underneath some scaffolding, um, and it would have been uh, during BP or a post-game show or something like that. And I just got to say, it's great to see you. So how are things? Things are good. I mean, you can't complain down here when you're in Arizona in the wintertime and you just heard that baseball's returning. So there's a lot of excitement going on. I can imagine. Uh, I think we're all excited to, to have baseball back. I certainly am. You know, the, the, the Ducks are supposed to open their season on baseball side of things on February 19th. So... I, not that I'm counting the days or anything. So, Sarah, one thing that, that, that has to happen every time somebody comes on the show for the first time, you have to tell us your two-minute life story in your own words. Oh, okay. Go. Um, so I was born and raised in Mesa, Arizona. Um, went to Red Mountain High School. Uh, graduated in 2011 and then headed out to Eugene for college where I – Played softball at the University of Oregon for all four years. Um, I majored in human physiology, and then I also took some time and got some research experience at the Bowerman Sports Science Clinic as well while I was there. Um, at, right after graduation, I decided to get a master's degree, so I went on to the University of Utah, where I got my master's in exercise and sports science. And I did some research at uh, elementary schools with children's physical activity. So I was basically coaching PE for two years. Um, took an internship at um, Exos Performance Facility in Arizona uh, between those two years. And then I started interning with the Brewers in 2017 um, and then came on full time after uh, the first season that I was there. So it was full time in October 2017 as their integrative sports performance coordinator. And then I just got promoted back in October um, to the position I'm in now as the coordinator of hitting development initiatives. That was really well done. Uh, so you, there, we, we said before we started recording the internal shot clock, you know, I guess I guess nowadays it's the pitch clock. I can start saying that in baseball. <laughs> you can start saying the pitch clock. Sarah Goodrum joining us. All right. So as you can imagine, I have multiple follow ups uh, to, to what you just said. The groundbreaking role. You're the first in your position that, that that's a female and then the minor league hitting coordinator role. What does that mean to you? Two-part question. And then part two, do, do you see that becoming more not abnormal, if that makes sense? Yeah, no. Um, when when the Brewers gave me the opportunity um, to come into this role, I was super excited for the opportunity. Um, I had been doing a lot of work with our hitting side anyway, so it just seemed to be a natural fit. Um, for me. Um, so I was super grateful to the organization and just honestly really excited when I got the news. Um, and I was on the phone with someone in our HR department and they were like, this could be like, I think this is a big deal. And I was like, I haven't even processed that part of it yet. I'm just so excited to get going. And they're like, we'll take a couple minutes to like, at least a couple minutes, maybe a day to like process this. And <laughs> Um, I still did it right away. For me, it was when uh, Kim Ng got hired as the general manager. It kind of like got me emotional at the thought of, I was like, oh my gosh, there's finally a woman um, overseeing the baseball ops department um, that had never been done before. And so for me, it kind of was like, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, like whatever role I want to pursue long-term, like I really felt like I believed I could because there was finally someone that was doing it at a really high level for me. And that was when I kind of realized, holy cow, like I'm in a little bit of a, you know, groundbreaking role as well. So what can I do to, you know, continue to do good for the organization, but then also be a role model to people following coming up. And I just think that like moving forward, you know, I think there's a lot more exposure in the sport and people are starting to understand the opportunities that, you know, people can work in baseball and it doesn't matter who you are, as long as you can pr provide a perspective um, that's unique and provide value to an organization. Um, this is for exciting stuff. I have no doubt that there's going to be some phenomenal people that are going to be going into roles similar to this one or this one after myself. So 
it's just a really exciting time to be working in sports in general. You know, I think it, it's it's cool to acknowledge that baseball, I think, has in a lot of ways been on the forefront of this from, you know, having folks like yourself in those positions of, of power. We've seen now an assistant coach coaching first base for the San Francisco Giants, who's a female, and it, just to name a few different things, you know, and I even think about how on the broadcast in my world, Jessica Mendoza has been a big part of broadcasts on ESPN. I mean, I really applaud baseball, I think, for being the sport that's been on the forefront of these sorts of things, which... You know, I, I think that that's just a cool recognition uh, to, to think about. Sarah Goodrum joining us. Um, you mentioned how you, you've had some of those sort of thoughts now of being a role model. What do you say and what would you say to to young women, young girls who are, 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 are seeing this happen? I mean, what, what would your message be to, 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 to those people that want to get into sports in this way? Yeah, so... I always look back on when I was a kid and I was aspiring dreams and I just, I watched baseball. No one ever told me no. And I, I give so much, I'm just so thankful for the parents I had that gave me the mindset of I could achieve anything I wanted to. And they really started to instill just this self-belief in myself. And so like the biggest thing is you have to be an advocate for yourself and you have to believe in what you can provide um, so being able to be in positions that you might be a little bit uncomfortable in, but you're, you're confident in your ability is super important. So it, it helps you build your own self-confidence in yourself so that you can advocate for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you have to make sure that you believe in what you can provide. Um, and it's going to naturally show to other people that you really care about your job too. And then the trust is just a natural thing that will come after that. But Believing in yourself, advocating for yourself, pushing for yourself, it, it's super important um, in this industry and I think in general too. You know, we talked to Anisha Curry, another groundbreaking duck like yourself on the show a few months ago, and, and she actually said something very similar that, you know, that self-confidence is just so important. I think that's such a great great message. So what's the day-to-day -day like for you now? I mean, tell us about what you're doing every day, especially as spring training is approaching. Things are starting to change a little bit. Um, so I just started going back to our spring training complex in Phoenix. I had been working remotely since we had finished our instructional league back in November. So I was kind of just clamming at the bit to finally get back into the complex. Um, guys are starting to slowly trickle in, but you know, there's some COVID protocols here and there, but Honestly, it's still, you know, a lot of Zoom and a lot of virtual meetings, um, just trying to game plan for the year as if it were normal, fully knowing that it will likely not be, but um, being willing to adjust. But just honestly, a lot of preparation, um, lots of conversations, getting to know um, our, our staff a little bit better and in a different view and uh, making sure that uh, the players that are here know who I am. Um, it's just, you know, the basic stuff, but I'm, I'm super excited for us to get going and be back on a baseball field. I know so many people in our organization are excited to be back because some people haven't been on a field in over a year. Yeah. So I feel like it'll be an emotional time when they, they're like watching batting practice for the first time. And it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard that sound in forever. <laughs> Sarah Goodrum, former Oregon softball player, breaking glass ceilings. We've got more with her coming up next. So stick with us. Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student-athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. This is the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. 
Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider and jumping right back into our conversation with former Oregon softball player Sarah Goodrum. So I'm, I'm curious if we could to, to, to kind of drill in on, on your history a little bit, because I understand, and especially looking at your, your background, your studies at, at Utah, you mentioned working with, with movement of young kids in elementary school. I, I feel like that's such a natural application now to what you're doing because hitting is is so much about body movement i mean is, is that kind of where all the interest came from you feel like you apply that on a daily basis now yeah i think everything just like naturally came into place honestly like i had a passion and a love for the game as a fan growing up and then i played softball um when i was at the bowerman sports science clinic i we like the, one of the grad students that I was always working with, we would always talk about baseball and biomechanics and how the body moves. I was always thinking about how the body moves when <laughs> I was playing. I was super nerdy on the sure. field. And like, and then I go into Utah and I'm working with children and like coaching them in a physical activity setting. But for me, it was the value of being able to communicate something to a first grader. It was like, if you can get the point across to a first grader, that's when I started to understand the value of communication and what you say and how important it is that what's communicated to whoever you're talking to, it, it's, it's delivered correctly. Um, so every single experience I've had along the way has just kind of piled up into what it is now. So it's really cool to just kind of look back and be like something like working with kids made to like someone I'd be irrelevant to working with professional players. But to me, it was like a super valuable two years because I learned so much about just being a better communicator through that process. Well, you're a teacher and everybody's a kid at heart, right? Yeah, exactly. See, I, especially in sports. I mean, we all can admit this, you know, most definitely. Favorite memories as a duck, uh, what comes flooding back? Uh, and obviously one of them had to be our, our conversations on the scaffolding, right? Oh my gosh. Um, yes, definitely. Thank first you. thing that comes <laughs> to my mind, first thing like right off the bat was just freshman year, um, going to super regionals, going into Austin, Texas and coming back winning these two games and going to the college world series for the first time in school history. And who knows how long I, I like you know, it just replays in my head all the time and just the, the chills I get goosebumps now thinking about it just being a freshman being able to experience that was incredible but then what came after it too was just the playing experience was amazing the culture on the team like I I value that that time so much so just honestly so many playing the playing days out at practice with the teammates like they I just I don't feel like as many people got to experience the experience I had of having four phenomenal teams with good team culture that was everyone was super motivated to winning and um, was picking each other up and embracing their roles on the team. It was just it was a phenomenal four years for me. Yeah, it was a I, I loved that era of of Oregon athletics, but particularly just because of my connection with softball doing play by play for your for your games. It was there's a lot of magical memories that I even have and. You know, for you guys, it was just a whole nother level of that. I mean, I can only imagine how cool all of that was. You know, I'm curious too, Sarah, because you were an academic 
all Pac-12 recogni recognition, recogni, I guess. I don't even know the right word for that. But you were honored by the Pac-12 for your academics. You must have taken that very seriously, too. I mean, do you, you probably still tell people, I bet, that that was a focus for you, wasn't it? I really valued education um, just because I knew, like, I wasn't the star of the team. I definitely wasn't going to get drafted. I wasn't going to go, you know, play on Team USA. Um, so for me, it was, I knew that after my four years playing there that I was going to be hanging my cleats up and I was going to have to move on. Um, so I knew that I, I needed to leverage my education, challenge myself in that space and, and make sure that um, I, I was just set up for life after a little bit. And I think the athletic department does a really good job of providing you a lot of opportunities to kind of, you know, get experiences outside of your sport. But um, it, I, I loved going to class. Like I, I just, I don't know. I was just a nerd at heart. I, I loved like the physiology classes, going in the cadaver lab and checking out the muscles of people. Like it was just, it was such a great experience. You just made Scott Phillips laugh and squirm all at the same time with uh, the cadaver lab reference. Hey, I mean, look, clearly it's worked out, right? I mean, I, I, I think it's it, it's funny too, Sarah, you know, maybe we're getting too much into the weeds here, but I think you'll appreciate this question that I feel like our generation because you and I are the same age. I think our generation is really the first generation where, like, you could be the sports person and you could be the nerd at the same time. And, like, those two, they coexisted, right? Like, it all worked yeah. together. It did. It did. I totally agree with that. I I loved it. I, It was just what I was. It's just who I, who I am. And I just wanted to embrace who I was. And it was welcome. So it was I love great. It. I absolutely love it. Well, we're, we're talking to you the day after National Girls and Women in Sports Day. And I, I'm just curious, as, as that's become so much more of a celebrated day, you know, and, and especially I think with the onset of social media, you can just see so many more stories like yours. What does that day mean to you now as somebody who is a pioneer, truly? I think it'll like click a little more next year. Um, but I will say that it empowers me and it motivates me more to see that stuff out there. And to see how many, like, there's so many strong women in this world that are playing sports at a high level. I mean, like, I mean, one of my teammates, Janie Takeda, is getting ready to go to Tokyo. Right. I mean, and trying to do this through a pandemic, like, those women are phenomenal and they need to be celebrated and they're incredibly talented. So it, it just gives me chills to know that there's recognition. And I hope that recognition turns into more traction and action um, because. I mean, there's some really talented, incredible women, and I, I think it's just awesome that we're finally being able to give, be given the opportunity in sports to do what we love. Honestly, it, I'm just so thankful for that too. I, I, I love that because I really enjoyed the Athletes Unlimited softball league. For for example, you know, we talked to Gwen Savekis on the show when when that was coming out, and I I hope that that's gets more and more traction just one example of what you're talking about all right I, i've already kept you longer than i said i would and i know you're about <laughs> as busy as everybody can be so i have to ask finally just what's next for you sarah i mean w what's the next step in your career and also when's the next time that we're gonna have you back at the jane sander stadium oh my gosh i hope soon first of all i was really upset i mean i usually come back for a football game in the fall mm. and then i always try to like sneak something in in the spring which is a little bit more difficult but I hope I get back into Eugene soon. I love, I love going back and visiting, but what's next? Uh, I, you know, I don't know the answer, but I can tell you this, that I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to learn more about how a baseball organization runs um, and continue to add value to the Milwaukee Brewers so that, you know, whatever the next opportunity comes up, I'm, I'm able to, you know, put myself out there again and, hopefully take advantage of any of those opportunities um so i'm just really excited to get into this role and, and make an impact and, and help our players get to the big leagues honestly and um we'll kind of see where it takes me but i'm really excited sarah goodrum thank you for being a duck uh thank you for what you've done and thank you for taking the time to, to chat with us a little bit this has been fun yeah this has been awesome thank you so much for having me what an amazing person. Sarah Goodrum, uh, the first female to be a minor league hitting coordinator in Major League Baseball. She's also a pro duck. Brought to you by our friends at QSL and Instaprint. Our Bring em Back campaign. More on that coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? 
Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack with you inside the Country Financial Studio. Thanks again to Sarah Goodrum. She took time to join us on the UOAA guest line, and what a great conversation. Uh, I've really enjoyed all of our Bring Them Back interviews presented by QSL and Instaprint. Visit either of Instaprint's two convenient locations, locally owned and operated by Duck fans. Go Ducks, thanks to QSL and Instaprint for our Bring Them Back campaign. Sarah Goodrum, just an amazing individual, huh? Loved having that interview. Loved doing that interview. Also, hey, uh, godux.com slash signing day to recap everything that happened yesterday. Tomorrow, head coach Mario Cristobal interviews five-star quarterback Ty Thompson. We've got that on Duck Insider tomorrow. Also, your last chance on godux.com slash signing day. Get in on the auction. There's still some good stuff out there. Tip-off for Oregon men's basketball tonight at 8 o'clock and a full weekend preview on tomorrow's show. See you then. Okay, forest animals, kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow, have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. River, how's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. I love it. Uh, turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. Okay. Squirrel. The forest has been preparing just for you. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest.